everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca, and today we're going to be talking about the drug warfarin, also known as Coumadin. Today we'll be covering all the topics you see below. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Warfarin belongs to the anticoagulant drug classification. Coagulation meaning basically clotting in the blood, and anti being the opposite. So what warfarin does is it's going to decrease clotting in the blood. This is why we give warfarin to any patient who's susceptible to having MIs or heart attacks, uh, strokes, or any other disease process that might involve any abnormal formation of clots. One key point to remember here is that not all clots are abnormal or bad. Whenever we get an injury, even something as small as a paper cut, and we start to bleed, clots are what will seal the wound and prevent it from bleeding. The way that warfarin works to decrease clotting is by inhibiting certain coagulation factors. Okay, so it inhibits or decreases coagulation factors. Inhibits coagulation factors. And the specific ones that warfarin inhibits are numbered 2, 7, 9, and 10. Okay, so warfarin will inhibit these coagulation factors. And that's because these are what we call the vitamin K dependent clotting factors. And why is that important? Is because the way that warfarin works is it decreases these coagulation factors by decreasing vitamin K synthesis. Okay, so Warfarin decreases vitamin K synthesis, which in turn will decrease the effectiveness of these vitamin K dependent clotting factors. If we don't have these vitamin K dependent clotting factors, then overall we're going to see less clotting in the body, which is exactly what we want with an anticoagulant. Warfarin is going to be contraindicated in anybody who has an active bleed, and that's because Warfarin inhibits all clotting to a certain extent, which means that it inhibits both the good and the bad clotting that happens in our body. And if we inhibit the good clotting from happening, then that means that anybody with an active bleed is not going to be able to heal that wound. Warfarin is also contraindicated in other medications that can cause increased bleeding. So just to name a few, you have aspirin, heparin, both of which will cause bleeding. Warfarin is also contraindicated during pregnancy because it can pose some unwanted risks towards fetal development. Bleeding is going to be the number one side effect to look out for with warfarin, but it can also cause nausea, vomiting, and many other side effects. To reduce the risk of bleeding, it's important to teach patients to use electric razors when possible, avoiding manual razors, as well as using softer toothbrushes, soft bristle toothbrushes, and making sure that the patient is being extra mindful of anything that can cause cuts or bruises. Especially elderly patients will likely have a fall assessment or something completed because a fall can cause much more damage if the patient is taking warfarin. INR is short for International Normalized Ratio, and it's a blood test used to monitor the effects of warfarin measures how long it takes the patient's blood to clot. So basically, the higher the INR, the higher the INR, the longer or slower it takes blood to clot. Okay, so high INR equals longer or slower clotting. And you can guess what will happen if we have a lower INR. Lower INR is going to mean shorter or faster clotting. Faster clotting. For patients who take warfarin regularly, we expect their INR to be anywhere between 2 and 3. Sometimes you'll see 2 to 3.5, but in most cases, 2 to 3 is going to be perfect. Let's say you have a patient with an INR of 4. So it's going to be out of this 2 to 3 range. Their INR is too high, and that's going to mean that it's taking too long for the patient's blood to clot. So if they have an injury, 
for example, if it's internal, external, then it's taking too long for their blood to clot, which puts them at a greater risk for bleeding. And one trick to remember is that the more warfarin you give to your patient, the higher their INR becomes. Okay, so if a patient's INR is 4, then you can expect that the doctor is going to decrease the dose of warfarin. And same goes for the other way around. Let's say you have a patient whose INR is 1. So we know that a low INR means shorter or faster clotting. It's going to mean that the patient is at risk for developing abnormal clots, and that can cause problems like heart attacks, strokes, and other disease processes. And what you can expect is going to happen in that case is going to be the patient is probably not getting enough warfarin, their INR is too low, so how do we raise INR? We increase the dose of warfarin. One of the antidotes for warfarin is quite simple. We can give a dose of vitamin K, which is going to allow those vitamin K dependent coagulation factors a chance to start working again. And remember, the more vitamin K that we have, the more vitamin K, the more clotting. So if your patient is bleeding and requires you to prevent this warfarin from having its effect, then you do the opposite of what warfarin does. You provide vitamin K as opposed to getting rid of vitamin K. This method is slower than others, so may not be indicated for emergency use, but if you'd like more detail on faster acting antidotes, I've placed a link in the video description for that. And those are the basics for warfarin. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below, or you can visit rpnt.ca for some extra help. Thank you.